Hey, what's up? Pixelflux here, and in this video, we're gonna be talking all things HDR. Now, with the internet recently just pretty much blowing up with all things HDR, like graphics cards and HDR monitors and HDR TVs and HDR Netflix and HDR games and HDR this and this and that, um, a lot of articles are popping up as well as videos like this one, but the information in them is not necessarily right. A lot of people are mixing an HDR as a photographic technique with HDR in screens, which are two pretty different things, quite different. And, you know, to me, as somebody who's actually gone to uni for visual effects and video processing and video acquisition and who makes his living off 3D graphics and uh, photography and video, I do find the need that, to educate people. So. Pardon me if this video is not your cup of tea, but it's what it is. Anyway, so um, what I've got here on the screen is something that I'll come back to a little bit later. So just have a good look at it if you haven't already, and I'm going to come back to it. Anyway, so beforehand I've actually made a few uh, preparations. I've just uh, isolated a few files which I've taken beforehand uh, quite, a, quite a bit time ago, so 2014 or something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to be using Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw to explain as best as, as I can in this video what HDR actually is in terms of video and screens. So what you're seeing right here is an HDR file. This is a 12-bit HDR Sorry, this is a 12-bit HDR file. Well, not HDR file, but we'll call it HDR. This is a 12-bit file. It's a raw sensor capture from my Canon 5D Mark III. Now, I'm displaying this on a low dynamic range screen, and so are you. And this is actually going through the internet using a low dynamic range um, compression method, um, namely the H.264 compressor. Uh, in whatever video format through the YouTube. So this is what you're seeing, but this is not what is in the picture, unfortunately. So the idea of HDR screens is that we can take this content and display it on a screen as intended. Now, what is that magical as intended? So obviously when I was in there, when I was taking that picture, I didn't see pure blue, clouds with pretty much no blue in the sky and whatever. I didn't see all that. So what did I see and what would an HDR TV display? So if I take this exposure slider here, um, you will see, as I slide it to the left to underexpose, you'll see that I've actually got quite a, quite a buttload of detail in those white clouds, which was previously just not visible. So what does this mean? Well, for one, HDR means high dynamic range, which means that you've got all this information in that image. So that, the, 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 the whole point of that screen is to display that image, right? But you probably ask yourself or ask me, like shaking your fist at the screen, but Hollywood makes pretty movies. How can we see all that beautiful blue sky and all that detailed clouds and whatever and not have our ground really dark like it is here and whatever. Hollywood is tricking us and whatever. Well, they're not really. Basically what we had to do in the past and kind of in the present anyway, is um, use a technique called tone mapping to actually compress all that detail in the colors and the luminosity to, uh, to, be, to be able to be displayed on a low dynamic range screen. So in this case, what I could do is use tone mapping. So if I go and just decrease the highlights and decrease the kind of like the more general whites, maybe underexpose a little bit and then kick the shadows up a little bit, maybe increase some of that contrast a little bit, give it a little bit of vibrance and maybe just reduce those oranges because they're just going out of whack now. The Big Ben, the uh, Westminster Abbey is not, sorry, there we go. Parliament of Westminster is not that bad. Anyway, so what I've done now is I've reintroduced that detail into the sky without actually us needing that HDR display. So that's basically the black magic that's been happening. So now you're probably asking yourself, so why the hell do we need that HDR display if we can already see all that information anyway? 
So the point of an HDR display is that when you go outside, the sky is really bright, and then you go inside, and you can still see the insides, or you, you know, if you're inside and it's really dark in comparison, and we're talking pretty big exponents here, um, like like orders of probably magnitude. Anyway, so if you, if you're say on a sunny day, you're inside, you're indoors, and you haven't got the lights on and it's pretty dim inside but you look at the outside and you see all that beautiful detail in the sky and whatever but you can also see what's inside if you took a picture you could not so that's the whole point our eyes are used to that massive difference in the luminosity so what an hdr display does is it just kind of makes it more natural for us to view that content as is um, as opposed to a flat image like this because you know with the contrast ratios that we have on TVs these days They're getting better obviously and obviously the screens and whatnot, but they're just they're still really really flat in comparison to what our eyes can actually see so um, to in, in layman's terms basically so on a low dynamic range screen a high dynamic range photo or video would be displayed like this on a high dynamic range screen you would pretty much see this because your eyes would be able to differentiate that extra luminosity um, so that's example number one the second example I would like to show you is this one which does exactly the same but it does it in reverse so basically we've got all these deep shadows here and that's my friend by the way we're just fooling around in London so we've got these deep shadows and it's it's pretty much black from that sleeve there the balustrades the railing they're all black the t-shirts black black and the hat is black and there's no detail so like it's a ruined picture one would say in a low dynamic range format like, like a jpeg yes it would be but that's a, that this is a high dynamic range file so what i can do is do the exact same thing called again tone mapping and i can reveal that detail in there and you know can obviously uh, do some adjustments and you know maybe some vibrance adjustments and whatever but you see the point right so if i just do a little there we go so anyway now we see all that detail so again if an image was pretty properly exposed or whatever you know obviously there's that huge difference in the sky and the shadows on a low dynamic range screen a high dynamic range image would look like this but on a high dynamic range screen it would look more like this so now for my two cents and actually before the two cents i'll uh, come back to those images that i've showed you before and especially that one you've you've probably seen these beautiful images in catalogs and magazines and like facebook's and photographers websites and whatnot and these are basically all tone maps from a raw file which i've literally just showed you on screen so you know you always see that beautiful detail in the clouds and all that beautiful non-white sky and you've also got that detail in the shadows and it's all beautiful and realistic and it's like oh i'm there and that's the effect of tone mapping that's what we've been doing for ages now to basically display that content which our sensors just capture that way so we can still kind of see all that content anyway it's not black magic we don't really need hdr displays what they are going to do is make things a little bit more natural in terms of a viewing experience um, however i'm afraid that and i haven't seen an hdr display myself I'll, i'm guilty as charged so correct me if i'm wrong but f from what i understand they're basically amoled displays with quite a bit more powerful uh, leds in terms of white um, portrayal and whatnot so I'm thinking what's gonna happen is if you place that TV in front of your bed for example it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to fall asleep because you'll be looking at some bright lights just before bedtime uh, as opposed to a flat TV like this which you can really just dim and if you dim an HDR display then that's pretty much gonna ruin the whole HDR effect anyway because you need that difference in the tonal in the, uh, in the luminosity now another thing that I'd like to uh, point out is that if you've got a fairly recent phone like say uh, a Samsung phone a Samsung Galaxy phone since S2 or maybe S1 even uh, or if you've got a recent Sony phone or a Lumia phone like I've got a 950 XL and I've got a Galaxy S4 they feature AMOLED or super AMOLED displays so those displays are really good because and i really love them and i actually would love to see a screen 
made out of that technology, like a, like a computer screen. Now, the reason why I love them is because they feature something called true blacks. So if the pixel or, you know, a portion of the screen or whatever is displaying black, pure black, the pixel is going to be completely off because they can now be independently turned on and off uh, without being dependent on backlighting like our modern TVs and, uh, and uh, computer displays are. So these offer a lot more tonal range than a regular TV or, or computer screen monitor does. So what I'm thinking is that those HDR displays are essentially just these displays. They're, they're just you know more powerful because obviously they're bigger, they've got bigger LEDs in there so they can produce more light but you've already got those displays in your pocket pretty much and if you put a photo on your say TV or, or computer screen and you put the exact same photo on your smartphone you will actually notice that on the phone it looks a lot more vivid richer it's just it's a pleasure to look at and that's essentially gonna be the experience going from a regular TV or a regular screen to an HDR screen and possibly even a little bit more it's gonna look a lot more natural less flat but it's not gonna be something incredible or game-changing or whatever so that's basically what I think of it and obviously if you've got any comments or you know corrections maybe I've said something wrong or made a mistake or maybe you've got some more information about that um, you know, please do leave a comment down below, you know, they're very welcome. But uh, anyway, this has been my video on the whole matter. Hopefully you found this educational and useful and hopefully this sheds some light on what HDR actually is as a technology as opposed to a photographic thing to overcome uh, low dynamic range sensors as they were. And, uh, you know, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, dislike it. And uh, if you'd like to see more comments, like uh, more videos like this, then please do subscribe. This helps me a lot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time.